Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're going to talk about post processing and denoising your audio. So let's get started. Right now, I have a multi cam clip loaded in my timeline in Final Cut Pro X. I, in this multicam clip, I basically have an audio and video stream that were recorded with a Canon 7D. I have an audio stream that came from a Zoom H4n, a uh, personal digital audio recorder. And then I have that same audio stream from the Zoom H4n processed in Isotopes RX2 uh, advanced software. Uh, and it was processed to basically denoise it. So let's get started. With this compound clip selected inside my inspector, you'll notice I have EOS Digital, which is the audio stream from the Canon 7D. If I scroll up, you'll notice that I have a compressor op uh, applied, as well as the pan mode set to dialog. If I go back to the beginning of my timeline and press spacebar, you can hear this audio stream. Hey guys, 40 from 40 TV. Just a quick test. I've got my Canon 7D set up in front of me, roughly three feet away. So as you can as you can hear, there's tons of background noise uh, happening in this uh, um, audio stream. So obviously, and uh, the quality is not the greatest. So obviously, one of way, one of the ways to fix that is to record with an H4n or some other type of external audio recorder. I was using the onboard mics on the Zoom H4n. Obviously, you can be using a separate shotgun mic. Um, that would be even better. But uh, for this tutorial, the point, is, the point of the tutorial is denoising this uh, audio. So uh, yeah, I went the quick and easy route. I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to select the raw audio from the Zoom H4n. And then I'm going to bump up the level to minus 3 dB as the audio that came in from the Canon 7D was hotter than the audio that came in from the Zoom H4n. I'll go ahead and press spacebar to audition this so you can hear it. Hey guys, 40 from 40 TV. Just a quick test. I've got my Canon 7D set up in front of me, roughly three feet away. So already we're hearing improvements over the audio that came from the Canon 7D. Next I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to check the Isotope Bars RX Advanced Audio, the stuff that was, that is Zoom H4n audio that was processed with the Isotope uh, RX uh, software. I'll go ahead and press spacebar to audition this. Hey guys, 40 from 40 TV. Just a quick test. I've got my Canon 7D set up in front of me, roughly three feet away. I have a Zoom H4n. So as you can tell, even better, right? So I didn't spend too much time processing it, but let me show you how I got there. I'm gonna press Apple uh, H on my keyboard to hide Final Cut Pro X, and we'll see that I have Isotope RX already open and the audio file from the Zoom H4n loaded. So uh, real quick, in case you didn't know, just click File, select Open, and that's how you load an audio file. You can load uh, WAV files, AIF files, uh, I believe you can load MP3s as well. Um, so, first things first, with this audio file loaded in here, you can do a lot with this pr uh, program. It's not just for removing noise. However, this tutorial is about denoising. So, the first thing that we need to do is select a noise profile. So that's kind of like recording room tone in the beginning of your footage so you can lay that out uh, in your track for any post effects uh, or gaps in audio. What we're doing, if we press the space bar, we can move our playhead around here in the audio, right? And if we press uh, Apple uh, or Command Plus, we can zoom in. If I press space bar right here, you'll notice this sounds like uh, basically just background noise. So with having this selected, we can come over here and click on denoise. Inside this window, you'll notice down here, there's a learn button. If I click on learn, it's going to use the selection I have selected as my noise profile. So I'll click on learn. After I do that, I can come up here and press command A. Actually, I didn't even need to come up there, just press command A. And then I can select preview, or I can select a piece of audio to preview from. When I preview the audio, it's going to include some uh, pre-roll and post-roll of unprocessed audio so I can compare uh, audibly. TV. Just a quick test. I've got my Canon 7D set up in front of me. So one quick note, uh, right now I forgot, right now I have the algorithm D selected, which is the slowest. If I select A and I do preview again. TV, just a quick test. 
I've got my Canon 7D. You'll notice that was a lot faster. That's just because this algorithm is in real time. And these different algorithms, the lower you go, so D being the best, A being fantastic, but just not as good as the others, um, happen at different rates. They're using different uh, calculations to come up with ways to remove the noise. Experiment. Um, usually I use A because, uh, you know, depending on where this is being output to and how bad the noise is, right? So in our example, we're going to use A, but feel free to experiment with your audio with the different algorithms. So again, I previewed by pressing preview. It's using these two settings here, the noise reduction in decibels as well as a smoothing factor um, to calculate how to reduce that profile that we selected to learn. Ideally, your noise reduction should be somewhere between 10 and 15 dB, 13 being a good starting point, and smoothing uh, set at 5 being a good starting point as well. You smooth too little, it's going to sound uh, strange, so we can do that by pressing preview. TV. Just a quick test. I've got my Canon 7D set. It almost sounds lasery or wishy-washy, right? But turning this all the way up to 10 also sounds kind of weird. TV. Just a quick test. I've got my Canon 7D set. Almost like a phasing of wind or something to that effect. So usually I stick around four, five, somewhere around there and play with the noise reduction. You crank this up too high, it's gonna sound extremely hollow. So just a quick example, if I press preview. TV, just a quick test. I've got my Canon 7D set up. That's the same thing as in Final Cut Pro X. If you turn up the noise reduction really high, it's gonna make your sound sound hollow. So again, 13 is a good point, but you can feel free anywhere between 10 and 15. I found 10 to work. Um, adapt to changing noise profiles. You're not gonna have this, uh, you're not gonna have this setting if you have the regular version. Next, if we wanna process all this audio with the settings I have select, oh, with the settings I have taught it with the learn function, I can click in here, press Command A, and select Process. Before I do that, another quick note. With having everything selected, I could click on this plus sign and say Auto Learn. Let's say I didn't know where the best uh, noise profile was to teach it. If I click on Auto Learn, it's decided to tell me, I'm gonna zoom out by pressing Command minus, it's gonna tell me that this is where it thinks the best uh, place is or the best noise profile is. I press Command A on my keyboard to select the whole thing. Or better yet, let's just preview it real quick. Quick test, I've got my Canon 7D set up in front of me. Rough. So does that sound better or worse than the selection I had made? It sounds extremely close. If we wanted to process, this, process everything, I'd press Command A, I'd select Process, and if you have the algorithm A selected, this is not gonna take very long, depending on the length of your audio file. If you had uh, the D algorithm selected, that probably would have, for this particular audio file, I think it would take a minute or two. Um, so not too long of a wait. And uh, yeah, so using D is not necessarily a bad thing, but definitely play around. So now that this selection is still selected, or this whole audio file, we don't want to export a portion of this because we're going to use the same thing to sync back up in Final Cut Pro X. So if we click on File, we go to Export Selection, then we can export this audio file. But before we do that, let's talk about the Advanced uh, Pane or Tab. So again, we have algorithms that we can use. They're the same as in the Simple uh, Pane. The big difference here is that you have a tonal and broadband noise reduction settings. Tonal noise reduction has to do with things like audio hum or something that is singular in its tone, um, something that is constant, if you will, whereas broadband uh, noise reduction is a varying degrees of uh, sound and tones comprising of that noise. Not necessarily white noise, but white or noise, pink noise, etc. could be thought of that. Or background noise when you're outside filming and recording would be broadband noise. These can be separated. So let's say when you were recording, your personal audio recorder was plugged into a, um, let me bring this window up because I realize you may be not seeing the whole thing. Let's say you're recording with your personal audio recorder plugged into a wall socket and you're getting the hum from that. You'd select the advanced pane and you'd decide that you'd, uh, you'd turn this up and 
set some level of reduction. So this is the threshold. Where is it finding that noise floor? If this is the 60 uh, hertz band right here, it's showing you it here. We don't have the problem, this audio waveform, so you're not gonna really see it happen here. But if you did, this is where you would set it. Broadband noise, well, that's what's happening in the simple category under these two basic settings. So if you didn't need to separate the two, then I'd use the simple pane. If you did, use the advanced pane. Once you have it processed, go back over here, click on File, Export Selection. It's gonna ask me where I wanna save this to. Um, I can change this to Fixed, to. I can save it to my desktop. What do I wanna save it as a WAV or a AIF -F file? I'll s set it at WAV, click on Save. Takes a second, it's done. Isotope RX Advanced. Um, version the regular version 2 which includes the denoiser it retails for 350 the advanced version retails for 1200 both plugins can be purchased for uh, quite a bit cheaper from places like Sweetwater Guitar Center etc etc um, anyways I, I hope you guys like this tutorial if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and if you like my content please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel alright guys till next time I'm out